Welcome, welcome to Everyday Mathematics. Here at Everyday Mathematics, as we always say, we do enjoy solving the harder problems, but above all, we also see and appreciate the beauty in the simpler problem. So today's problem is uh, quite easy. Uh, it comes from the MIT 2024 integration B finals, uh, tiebreaker uh, number two. And it is the integral from x equals to zero to x equals to two pi of sine x, uh, two x minus five sine x, all that in brackets times sine x over cosine two x minus 10 cosine x uh, plus 13. So uh, before I jump into uh, sharing with you the solution to this problem, I'd like to thank our subscribers. Thank you so much for the support you continue to show us. It's because of your support that we get the motivation to come uh, back here time and again uh, to share with you uh, our versions of uh, the solutions. Uh, for our first time visitors, uh, what we do at Everyday Mathematics is uh, we do go around and about, uh, look for problems that seem challenging, and then we come back here and share with you uh, what we think are solutions that befit these problems. Uh, for our repeating visitors who haven't gotten uh, the motivation to subscribe to our channel, we really encourage you to consider subscribing to our channel. So going on to uh, the solution to this problem, um, I think uh, the quickest thing to do is just um, uh, express everything into the single angle formalism because um, we do have the double angle uh, expressions, sine 2x and cosine 2x. So we could uh, simplify this further. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. And then uh, cosine 2x is cosine uh, squared x minus sine uh, squared um, x, which is 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Uh, so uh, when you multiply sine x across, this becomes 2 sine squared x cosine x minus 5 sine squared x over, uh, in place of cosine 2x, we have 2 cosine squared uh, x minus 1 minus 10 cosine x plus 13. So that uh, uh, can be simplified further by re-expressing sine squared x in form of cosine squared, uh, squared x, which is one minus cosine squared x. Um, and similarly, uh, this sine squared x also has been expressed in terms of one minus cosine squared x. So simplifying that further in the numerator, we have minus two cosine cube x plus five cosine squared x plus two cosine x minus five over 2 cosine squared x minus 10 cosine x plus 12 because this negative 1 and the 13 interact to yield 12 here. So which is good. Um, we can decide to pull this negative out. Um, and so we have 2 cosine cube x minus 5 cosine squared x minus 2 cosine x plus 5 over cosine squared x minus 10 cosine x plus two uh, with the negative sign outside the integral sign. Um, so this is an improper fraction. Why? Because the numerator is greater than the denominator. So we can um, take advantage of long division. Um, so we say two cosine uh, cube x minus five cosine uh, squared x minus two cosine x plus five divided by 2 cosine squared x minus 10 cosine x plus 12. So if you multiply the divisor by cosine x, we get 2 cosine cube x minus 10 cosine squared x plus 12. Then you subtract that from um, the dividend and you get 5 cosine squared x minus 14 cosine x plus 5. And then now uh, if you multiply the divisor by, if you multiply that by five over two, we get five cosine squared x minus 14 cosine x. Um, and sorry, we, we get uh, five cosine squared x minus 25 cosine x plus 30. And then when you subtract that from the, the difference that we got previously, uh, we get 11 cosine x minus 25. So what that means is the negative integral of uh, 2 cosine cube x minus 5 cosine squared x minus 2 cosine x plus 5 over 2 cosine squared x minus 10 cosine x plus 12 is negative 
the integral uh, of cosine x plus five over two minus the integral of 11 negative, okay, uh, 11 cosine x minus 25 over two cosine x minus 10 cosine x plus 12. Um, since whatever we have in the numerator here is the remainder uh, from the long division. So um, it's easy to see this because since uh, our, uh, since, uh, since our interval is zero to two pi, since cosine x swings in both the uh, positive and negative uh, direction in equal measure, it's easy to see that cosine x after integration goes to zero, but we'll do our due diligence and show that, yeah, indeed it is zero. So, um, we can also go about by uh, factorizing the denominator, and that becomes two cosine x minus four uh, times cosine x minus three. So integrating uh, this first part, cosine x becomes sine x, five over two becomes five over two x. Then we have zero to two pi as our interval. Um, so what happens here is that uh, with sine x, sine two pi minus sine zero, with five over two x is five over two times two pi minus five over two zero. And so sine of two pi is zero, sine of zero is zero. And five over two times two pi, uh, the twos cancel, so we get uh, five pi, but we have a negative sign there, so it mm -hmm. becomes negative five pi. Now focusing on uh, the next part uh, here, um, this we can decompose this fraction uh, into partial fractions, and that becomes four over cosine x minus three plus three over two cosine x minus four. Now um, we can say let uh, t be equal to tangent of x over two, such that uh, dt dx is a half of sec squared x over two, and so, 2 dt over sec squared x over 2 is equals to dx. And we know that uh, sec squared x over 2 is 1 plus tan squared x over 2. So uh, 2 dt over 1 plus t squared is equals to dx, right? And so looking at our integral, uh, this is the same as negative uh, 5 pi minus the integral from x equals to 0 to pi of 4 over cosine x is the same as cosine squared x over two minus sine squared x over two minus three. Um, and then um, since we had uh, two cosine x, uh, the same thing happens here. Now, since t equals to tangent x over two, uh, if we have a right angle triangle and the best angle there is x over two, and since uh, the tangent of x over two is t, and we know that tangent of an angle is the opposite over the adjacent, so t is the same as t over one, so our opposite would be t, and then the adjacent would be one, and the hypotenuse therefore would be the square of the two sides, so a square root, which is now square root of t squared plus one. And therefore, cosine x over two, which is adjacent over the hypotenuse, would be one over square root of t squared, and then uh, the sine of the x over two would be t over uh, square root of t squared uh, plus one. And so therefore, um, this integral here becomes uh, negative five minus, uh, and one thing to note here is that the limits, uh, um, would tend to negative pi, a negative infinity to, um, positive infinity. I'd like to explain why that is the case. So if you have a graph, right, and this is our zero, and then we have uh, pi, right, and then you plot, you plot, um, okay, let's say this is two pi, right, and then this is uh, four pi. So, uh, and here we have pi. So if we're plotting tangent x over two, 
essentially our asymptote will be at pi because that's when x over two at this point is pi over two. And so, and then at negative pi, we'll have another asymptote. So we'd have a curve like, like that, right? And then the same thing would happen here. We would have something like that. So since we are interested in integrating from zero to two pi, the behavior here is very similar to the behavior here. Right? And so we can pretty much consider the behavior between pi and two pi to be similar to the behavior of our, because we're looking at T behaving. So this is tangent X over two. Right? And this is T, right? So T um, being tangent of X over two, as X approaches pi, it tends to positive infinity, right? And then on the lower side, on the upper side of pi, it tends to negative infinity. And then uh, at two pi, it's zero. And that is the same behavior here. So we can say our integral essentially is from T equals to negative infinity or tending to negative infinity to T tending to positive infinity. And that's why now we have added our limits as shown here, right? And then in place of cosine squared x over two, we have, since we have cosine squared x over two, we have one over square root of t squared plus one squared, so one over t squared plus one. And then sine squared x over two is t squared over uh, t squared plus one minus three. And the same thing happens here, but we have the two here. So simplifying that further, um, here in the denominator, uh, having a common denominator of t squared plus one, and then that flipping to the numerator. And since in place of dx, we had two dt one plus t squared, and we see that this one here cancels with this, and with this, right? And so as we go ahead, um, we see that we are four over negative, uh, then we have these two here coming all the way out. And then we have four over negative two minus four t squared. And as if we have a negative here, multiplying it across, that becomes a positive. Uh, same here, we have four over two t squared plus one. And then we have three over two t squared plus one after this integral. We can now uh, deal with this blue integral and the green integral separately. Uh, with the blue integral, we can just say let t equals to one over square root of two tan theta, so that dt d theta is equals to one over square root of two sec square theta. Um, and so dt is the same as one over square root of two sec square theta d theta. And when t tends to uh, negative infinity, uh, theta tends to negative pi over two. And when t tends to positive infinity, theta tends to pi over two. So um, substituting in uh, for t with one over square root of two tan theta, uh, we get uh, four over uh, square root of two from here and here, and over one over 
Now, since this squares and this two becomes two, the square root of two becomes two, the twos cancel. So we are left with essentially four over root two, um, one over tan squared theta plus one times sec squared theta. And so tan squared theta plus one is sec squared theta. The sec squared theta is canceled out. So this one and that one cancel out. And we are left with four root two, four over root two, integral from theta equals to pi over two to pi over two of the theta. That integral essentially is just um, theta with, uh, sorry, this is, let's use it negative. And so we have four over square root of two uh, pi, because pi over two minus minus uh, pi over two becomes pi. In multiplying the denominator with root two, numerator and root two, uh, we have four root two over two, so we have two root two pi uh, as the answer for the blue uh, integral. The green integral, we can let uh, t be equals to one over root three tan theta, such that dt, d theta is one over root three sec squared theta. And so uh, essentially dt is equals to one over root three sec squared theta d theta. And then when t tends to infinity, a negative infinity, uh, theta tends to pi over two. When th t tends to infinity, uh, theta tends to positive pi over two. And so uh, the integration uh, simplifies to um, outside we have a constant of three over root three and then integral of d theta of one from pi over two to pi over, from negative pi over two to pi over two. So that is three over root three pi and multiplying uh, root three to the denominator and the numerator, um, the denominator becomes three and then we have um, the three and the three in the numerator and numerator cancel, so we have root three pi, and this is the answer for the green integral. So since our question demanded that we have um, negative five pi plus the blue integral and the green integral, uh, we know the blue integral resulted into two root two pi, and then this green resulted into root three pi. Um, the answer is essentially um, two root two plus root three minus five pi. That is the answer that was provided in uh, the solution. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for following along and I hope you, you enjoyed uh, our version of the solution. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure, uh, you know, hanging out with you here. Until next time, uh, tutelo, a lot of question for me.